Yes, good boy. Okay. Hello again, Everhouse. I'm Thomas Camilleri, and this is Pablo. And welcome to Hamroon. This is an 1800s maisonette, and it's amazing because Hamroon is very largely untouched. There's this amazing high street, which is still very similar to what it was back in the 1800s. Luckily, it's not been turned into horrible high buildings like a lot of other places. This was a massive project for me. I mean, it's a very small place. It took over a lot of my life during lockdown. The ground floor is just essentially a long corridor that leads to the very small garden at the back. In the middle, there's a staircase that comes up, beautiful Maltese staircase, Tarrach, and then goes on to both halves. There are three rooms on either side. This side is the street side, so it's a bit louder, it's more colorful, camp, fun, and it just worked perfectly to create these two self-contained spaces that, you know, whenever I've got guests over, they've got their own breakfast room, so we don't need to be sharing the same space as well. And also each side just has such a realized character and they're so different from each other. Yeah. For me, it's the love of the process and just spending hours at markets and online looking for interesting items that will work together. I'm not really an interior designer where, you know, I put together color palettes and whatever. For me, it's very much inspiration led. With all of these items, there are two things that I really love about them. One is that a lot of them are reclaimed, things that would otherwise end up being thrown away. And everything has a story, which is so much more interesting than when you buy something which is new. And there's always a starting point. With this room, I remember my friend Godwin had messaged and told me, listen, somebody left this big framed carpet of a peacock out in the street in Floriana. Shall I keep it for you? So he kept it for me, and it's now the headboard of the bed. And then from that extremely camp, over-the-top, framed carpet of a peacock came everything else in the room. So the bedside tables were stacked on top of each other, and they were just like a library filing system. I separated them and, and then got marble tops made for them. The mirrors were actually the wing mirrors of a dressing table, and the beautiful middle mirror had broken. I ended up using the side ones on either side of the headboard to go above the bedside tables. This mirror is, is brilliant. I've never seen anything that shape. Then I paired it with this telephone table and the, the mirror looks like an open peacock's tail. So I mean it all ties in together. Those brass hooks by the door are actually curtain tiebacks. They were on the floor of the Birgu market. They kind of look like coral, so I just turn them upside up and they're now coat hooks. As you saw when you came to see my place in Xira, I love mid-century opaline lighting. And in fact, with all of the extra shades that I had from there, I ended up filling up the entire corridor downstairs. It's a bit of a difficult space because essentially it's just a passageway that leads to the stairs and then to the garden. So I did want to have a bit of fun with that. I mean, that's why with all of those glass shades, I created that light feature on the side. And then eventually the owners of the old Pandora cane shop got in touch and they said, listen, unfortunately we're leasing out the shop and they're not going to be keeping the sign. And it's a beautiful 70s PVC sign. So that found a new home there. And then actually a few weeks ago, I discovered that they were getting rid of the old seats from the Silesian Theatre in Slema, where we've done so many shows. And I picked up two rows of seats, and it was obviously a sign, because wedged down the side of the seats were tickets for the 2020 Comedy Nights show, which were the last shows that we ever did there before lockdown happened, so they had to come back here. For example, these lights over here, I found that really fun pineapple-shaped light at the Liya village fair. And then I started noticing that, you know, at the Birgu market and on Marketplace, there were lots of other ones for sale. And I think they were quite popular in the 70s and 80s. So I managed to put together a set, so they're now kind of the same, but different. Pure reclamation is this bookcase over here. My friend Jonathan was stumbling home, very drunk at two o'clock in the morning, and he walked past a semi-demolished house in Slema, and in the only bit that was not demolished yet, there was this bookcase as the only piece of furniture left and the workers were leaving their, their thermoses and their, their clothes when they were getting into work there in the morning. 
And he was like, this is insane. This shouldn't be demolished. And him and his friend dragged it home at two o'clock in the morning. And now he's moved back to Scotland. So I am now the proud owner. This carpet, for example, it's my grandparents' old carpet. It's not the most beautiful carpet, but means quite a lot to me. And luckily it's big, bright, colorful, so it really goes with this side of the house. Even with this kitchen, for example, the units were in an old house in Fleur de Lis and they were, they were painted baby blue, which I loved. But then from the tiles, I picked out a yellow and that ended up being the color in there, which I paired with a kind of more modern kitchen. And I love marble as well, so I added that counter and the backsplash. You know, the kitchen's quite tight, so I really needed a tiny kitchen table. So I needed to find one that would be small and could fit perfectly. And I found this guy in Gozo. He loves collecting, hates selling. So he's got these three garages full of stuff, and they're all full of woodworm. Normally, you'd get a little palette knife and fill the little holes with this wood filler. I literally slopped it on my hand, and I was just rubbing it in, you know, the, the, on the legs. But it was worth saving because it's a really beautiful table. In there is really quite colourful and bright, and it's a perfect little kitchen, and I love using it. It's just incredible, the stuff that gets thrown away. I mean, these sofas now are really back in style, and you find them for sale for crazy prices. But these were, I think, about 30 euro for the lot, two armchairs and a sofa, but they were in really bad shape. And I bought some fabric online. Luckily, it arrived and it was... So they're lovely, very comfortable. With this place as well, one of the main things that drew me to it were the tiles. Especially in this room, it's not often that you find a double border. I found this beautiful blue terrazzo, which I'd never seen before, terrazzo tiles, um, in a house in Zebuch, which was an absolute hassle to get and to clean and to reuse, but so worth it. Even the unit underneath the sink is an old sewing machine. And then my friend Brendan, he made a few pink terrazzo pieces to kind of tie everything in together. And yeah, it's fun because it's, you know, baby blue, baby pink and white. It's worth the hunting and it's worth the carrying and it's worth the backache because that's the end result. I mean, obviously now I've got a bit of a reputation that I'm the guy you get in touch with if there's something being thrown away that shouldn't be. And this friend had messaged me and told me, I've just seen two beautiful Maltese doors in a skip. And I turned up with my smart. Thank God it's a soft top because the hood went down and I managed to fit these two doors in the smart. I didn't even need to replace any of the glass, nothing. Having the Maltese balcony on this side really adds to the very different energies that both sides have. So this side overlooks the busy high street. Um, it's got all of this light coming in from the south facing Maltese balcony. And then the other side overlooks the gardens at the back. I'm so lucky because I've got gardens behind my tiny garden. So there's still a lot of light from that side. I love maximalism, I love eclecticism. The other side was a bit more of an exercise in restraint and actually holding back. Do you want to check it out? Here we go, Platinum, come on. Subscribe to the Everhouse channel by clicking on the logo to receive updates on our latest episodes. If you have a project we could feature, get in touch with us at everhouse.co.